Hello, welcome back. This is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes. And this is a remake of my first jewelry jar um, video. Uh, when I made the video with my granddaughter, uh, we used some software that uh, turned out my movie um, editing software couldn't uh, deal with. And so rather than go to all the trouble of trying to find the software that would um, redo the videos in the format I needed, I thought it would be faster just to go through the jar again. This jar was purchased from Salvation Army uh, Thrift Shop and it was $14.99 marked as is and I did get a bit of a discount because I purchased other items at the same time and because uh, I used a coupon. So, um, I, whoa, that doesn't belong there. So I'm just going to take some stuff out of the jar and we'll take a look at it. Um, I, as I said, I have been through this uh, material already. Um, so it's not a total surprise to me, but it's been a little while. And so I'll have to uh, sort of remember what it was that I found and what was so interesting. Um, First off, here is a, I'm going to put this off to the side, sorry, let me start again. Here is a silver tone necklace with a heavy chain and just a small um, decorative element in the center. It's got quite a bit of wear. The, uh, there's the, the lion logo that is, oh, I never remember if that's Liz Claiborne or Anne Klein. Anyway, um, it's one of those two. I think it's uh, Anne Klein. So this is uh, silver tone, but um, the centerpiece is well worn. The chain actually is in better shape than the centerpiece. The clasp is a little worn as well. I don't know if that'll clean up with some soap and water, but uh, certainly I'll try to clean it up. And if, if it doesn't, uh, if it can't be restored to sort of pristine looking condition, I may reuse the chain in some other jewelry. So for uh, a one uh, vintage or named piece, um, so far that's not bad. Um, okay, so this was an as-is jar, so I did expect that there would be some broken pieces. And so here's a broken piece. Unfortunately, it's Sarah Coventry, which I've been trying to collect. So I'm kind of sad that it's broken. Um, uh, the chain is in excellent condition, so I could reuse it in other jewelry. It's um, sort of a flattened um, type of uh, horizontal ring, but uh, certainly I could put a, a jump ring in there and and use sections of this in some earrings or another piece of jewelry. Um, just as this has got a, a jump ring in here, I guess this would be the extender. So this must have been a, a, a good length of a necklace uh, to have broken in that spot. So that's too bad, but that's okay. That's quality uh, reused pieces. Um, some of this stuff I have packaged into little packages already. So here's a little pair of earrings. Um, they're just post post uh, earrings, no, no makers information on them, and nothing marked. Oh well, wait a minute. I shouldn't say that. This mark, this uh, clutch is marked Avon and JJH. So let's look on the other earring and see if that's also it marked. This looks like. Um, tiger eye, but it's not. It's just plastic. So let's look on the other side. And the other, oh, it is marked. So the other um, ear clutch uh, or butterfly uh, stopper, whatever you want to call them, is marked JJH Avon. So I guess this is uh, a pair of earrings from Avon. I'll have to see if I can look that up. If not, I've got a, I've certainly got a matching set of uh, clutches from Avon. See the little things you forget when it's been a few months since you made your first video. Also, I'm learning to look better 
um, I guess I would say, at things. So here is a um, one of those ribbon necklaces that usually has a glass pendant on it, and this one is broken. Um, I may keep the lobster clasp, um, or I may take this broken piece off and uh, let my granddaughter string some beads on here for some play jewelry. I'm going to put that off to the side. Here's a watch band, a stretch watch band, uh, Spidel USA, very good maker. Uh, it's missing one end, so it can't even be reused uh, with a watch. I don't know what kind of things you could repurpose this as. I suppose if there was some way to, I don't know, uh, I'll put it to the side. <laughs> and this isn't jewelry, but uh, it was in a jar. It's um, a binder clip. Uh, so... Um, I use these for other purposes so that uh, won't go unused. Here's another broken uh, necklace piece. This is, um, let's see, if I unwind it, it might be able to tell me. Looks like, yeah, it looks like leather. Inside there it's uh, uh, twined leather, black. Um, had something on it. Um, but it's, it's got the clasp, but it's missing whatever joined to the other pieces. So this one has its, um, wire end on it. It certainly could be reused. Um, and the second piece, uh, might find a way to use it in some other jewelry. A couple other pieces. We're getting, uh, I guess through the broken pieces off the top here. Here's a broken pin. Um, a metal horn, I guess it had some kind of decoration here. So uh, that might be able to be reused in a Christmas decoration. And I put this in the bag, I remember now, because this has got to be the most delicate piece of beading I have ever seen. Um, these would be about uh, five si size 15 beads, which are, uh, or even smaller, um, size 15 is the smallest I've used, and these look, um, to my eye, even smaller, uh, and it's made into these little black and white flowers, so it's a lovely little, um, well, it's too long to be a bracelet, so it's probably a necklace for a child, and it still could be used as a necklace if a, uh, if a closure was put on it. So I'm keeping that separate so that um, it doesn't get damaged it, uh, because it, it, it's just, it, 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 it feels like less than a feather. It's very, very delicate. And uh, I would not have the patience probably to do something uh, of that size. I have worked with size 15 beads in other contexts, but not in those little tiny rounds like that. Next in the jar, if I can get it out. All right. So a number of little bits and pieces. Um, here is a bale. Uh, it needs a pendant to go with it, so I'll put that to the side. Here is a pin. That's a plastic pin that says Ski Stars. Um, if you know anybody who likes to ski, I'd be happy to send that to them. Um, this is gorgeous. This is a, well, maybe I'll put my hand behind it. I might be able to see it better. This is a four-leaf clover. It's in a dark metal like uh, copper with a black, uh, probably plastic rhinestone in the center, raised up in the center. Look at the length of the pin on this thing. Look at how far it sticks out from the side. Um, when you're reading about um, brooches and how to identify their age based on the style of pin, one of the characteristics of older pins is how far the pin sticks out. And this one is dangerous. It's lethal. I, I wouldn't want to uh, 
stick it in my finger, uh, even on the off chance. So I'm not sure if this is, it looks like this is copper with a dark patina. I'm not sure if that's natural patina because if you look at the back here, it's still that um, very solid patina color. It's just sort of on the top edge here that you can see a coppery color. The clasp is a C clasp, so you can see there how it comes out from under the C. Um, so I've no idea uh, where this was made, uh, how old it is. There are no markings. I'm going to just check the, the pin part, the pin stem, see if I can feel. No, it's rough in itself, but I don't see anything on that stem. And it, and it looks more like a, a, a silvery gray metal underneath there. So um, this is quite intriguing. Uh, I have no idea how old it is. It's a small size, um, you know, just sort of the size of the end of my thumb, um, but absolutely beautiful. That is uh, a real treasure. Here's another pin, uh, just a, a little lapel pin. It says graduate, um, gearing up. So this looks like a tire. Um, on piste diplomé, so French for a graduate of um, probably a cycle club or a learning to cycle club of some sort. Uh, I'll put this in my collection of uh, pins from odds and ends um, and uh, not sure what to do with these. And at one point you would collect these and put them on a vest or a hat, but they don't. this one doesn't have any meaning for me, so I don't know really what I would do with it. Um, I'm going to just dump this out and show you the extent of um, the beads that I decided to recycle um, from this jar. There were some necklaces with uh, glass beads, so the, the, the blue, green, aqua, moss green, uh, dark, light, uh, sort of clear, brown, pinkish, red, um, white, a few yellow, uh, some and some clear with red centers. These were necklaces that were broken or not appealing to me in their uh, uh, configuration, so I, I took them apart to save them for the beads. I think some of them were broken, uh, uh, you know, one strand was broken or already, you know, um, separated from the rest. So I got a good little stash of beads for working in jewelry um, and glass beads are always uh, nice in wind chimes. So I'm going to put those aside. Uh, I had s found some bicones. Um, oh sorry, here's some more uh, glass beads, a few more glass beads, just odds and ends um, of different colors. So a good, a good uh, weight in beads. The jar itself weighed close to a pound and the contents two pounds. So there was a good amount of jewelry in there. Um, these are dark red and um, I guess a deep red crystal bicones that I saved from a broken uh, bracelet. And these are some smaller, these are plastic uh, pink, red and light pink bicones as well. And these are uh, a brown uh, bicone. I can't remember if these are crystal or if they're plastic. Those are plastic just by the weight of them. So uh, those I'll keep for working with jewelry with children. So I don't have to worry about lead in the crystal and then putting them in their mouths. Um, the rest of these pieces are odds and ends. These are wooden beads. This is a single earring that was in the jar. And because there are three dangles, uh, it would be uh, pretty straightforward to make two earrings and a little pendant from this. The U-shaped piece could be used um, even on the earrings because of the um, hoops it has on it. So that's, that's uh, worthwhile repurposing. Here's a little star lever back 
that uh, would have had a hoop here at the front for a pendant or a dangle of some sort, like, uh, but it's gone. So that's really um, not really worth redoing anything. Here's a nice sparkly earring, single earring uh, with some sort of antiqued uh, bronze uh, metal. This is just, uh, it looks like a, a, a rhinestone, but it's not, it's just pressed metal. But this is a nice shiny rhinestone, and there's, all the rhinestones are here. So this could be made into a nice little pendant on its own. Uh, with the, And you could, you know, have beads and appropriate colored chain, and it would be quite nice. Um, here's another single earring, and I always liked filigree. So um, this has got rhinestones and filigree. Um, all these rings at the bottom here could have jump rings and dangles or beads, uh, rhinestones hanging from it. So this could be made into an awesome pendant. Um, here is a part of a necklace. And I'm not sure how it's actually supposed to work. Maybe it, oh, I don't know. It's got this chain. Maybe the chain goes, oh, there we go. The chain goes down. This could be onyx. These are some hematite beads, some little bamboo beads, a bit of crystal, some black wooden beads. So this is meant to go on a chain and uh, have a chain coming off each side. Maybe I'll put it this way. Have a chain coming off each side of the hematite beads. So this could certainly be um, restored to a necklace form or uh, have pieces added, removed to sort of repurpose it into something quite individual. And um, these I just haven't bothered to do anything with. These are um, not your normal safety pins. You can see by the round end, but they're purpose built to hold these little gold beads as some sort of decoration. Um, the beads are nice and shiny still, even though the safety pins are starting to lose their glow. So the beads might be worth uh, saving. Here's a uh, lobster claw um, finding for a necklace um, that could be reused. Here are a couple of French wire for uh, earrings. They would, they should have had something. Sorry, this way, hanging off this little loop here in the front, but there's nothing there. So, but there's a pair of them. So um, they're not marked in any way but they are not um, tarnished. So I, I can't test for precious metals, but certainly if I just wanted to, a quick pair of earrings for myself, I could use them. Um, I couldn't really make earrings to sell to somebody if I didn't know the content. Um, oh, this is a barrette. I remember taking it apart, taking the, um, the beads off of it. So there's a nice uh, barrette um, backing and clip if I need to repurpose it. Uh, this was one of my tear jerkers, um, you know, uh, it, it, from the jar because this is an absolutely exquisite three sections of probably a bracelet, given that it's um, a fold over clasp, and it's on the on the bracelet it's marked Dorland D apostrophe O R L A N which is a Canadian company that I try to collect. This is an absolutely amazing shape, but there's only the three links. Um, so I'm gonna save this. I, I, you know, if it had been broken and the other piece went in another jar, I, I would just have cried if I'd known that. Um, I'm gonna assume that this is all there was and maybe I can turn these into earrings or bits of pendants or something because they're just beautiful. And then this is, um, from the bag, from the jar, um, a really beautiful rhinestone-laden uh, ring, uh, earring, that uh, I will uh, probably repurpose. It could make a nice pendant just in that shape itself. Um, and along with it, here's part of an earring that uh, parts can be repurposed, and it has a rhinestone. Here's a little tiny rhinestone bit of something 
uh, part of uh, uh, an earring which has a nice rhinestone in the, uh, the top here, an old uh, screw back earring. And these are all little bits and pieces of rhinestones that were in the jar and that I'm going to save for that time when I need to uh, replace the rhinestone, even one that's so tiny it, it hides in my fingernail. I don't know if I can put it on my fingernail and show it to you there, but uh, it's quite small. But definitely worth saving. Nice and shiny. So uh, a good craft pile um, out of this um, as-is jar. And, like not not really junky as-is stuff, if, if you know what I mean. Um, next we have the bangles. I'm going to pull these out. Mm. That's a, that's quite a few of them. And I'm going to try to organize them. We have um, two of these bangles. I kind of think of them as a crown style bangle because they've got uh, the zigzag with the little dots on top of it. These are in really good shape. They're not marked in any way, um, but they would be nice to wear with some plain bangles. So those are that's a pair of two. There's this single wide bangle that kind of looks like fused chain. Um, it's kind of grayish. Uh, don't know if that's dirt, if it's tarnish. It, it's uh, it would be impossible to, to on camera here to go by it, but on uh, each section and see if it was marked. But I think I've already done that, and I don't see that it's um, anything that would inspire me to think it's uh, sterling silver. Um, but it'd be nice because it's a different texture and shape to wear it with some plain silver bangles. And this jar certainly had plain silver bangles. Um, that one's gold. That one's gold. Let's see if I've got them all. Okay, so here's two plain silver bangles, no marks. And then a textured bangle, which has got a zigzag pattern all the way around, and no marks. And then these um, three bangles, they're not quite identical. One's a little bit different, but they have this hammered or textured, it's almost like pushed in uh, look on the edge. And there's three of those. So any of those would look nice together with this other um, silver bangle. Oh, whoops, here's one I missed. There's a fourth one of those textured bangles. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight silver tone bangles. Then we have um, three plain gold tone bangles that would be quite nice with these uh, textured bangles as a set, or that would be a group of five. And then there's uh, two more um, textured bangles. It's got a sort of a dot and a space um, design around the edge. Again, not marked uh, and good color. So, uh, and finally, there are two um, gold tone bangles with this diamond, um, shape punched into the edges and then a, just a little cross hatch in between the diamonds. So nicely textured, catches the light and any of this combination of bracelets would look nice together. So two, four, um, six, seven, eight, nine um, gold tone bracelets. I don't need a lot of bangle bracelets so I'll probably put those in a lot and see if I can convince someone that they that they would like a bunch of bangles. Um, here's another uh, single earring that was in the lot. And this is quite um, usable for 
uh, or, or reusable. has a nice uh, blue rhinestone at the top. The circle has all of its uh, green and blue rhinestones, and there's these lovely little dangles that are cold at the bottom that are probably the glass dangles, blue and yellow. So that will go in the reuse pile. There was one of these earrings marked, I've forgotten what it was marked on the back here. Um, anyway, I'll show it to you and then I'll look at it again through my loop. Um, Scotch thistle with a purplish type stone, silver tone, um, screw back earring, perfect functioning order. I've seen these <coughs> with in pairs with other um, colored rhinestones, um, like yellow. I think I saw a, a yellow pair recently. So let me just look at the, um, the, the round part of the screw back because that's where it's marked. And um, as I said, it's been a little while since I did this jar, so I have to remind myself. Usual markings, uh, certainly nothing I'd uh, run across before and haven't run across since. But a beautiful little earring, and I guess um, it would make a nice, delicate little pin. Um, I don't think it would be uh, big enough to make it into a pendant of any sort. But I guess I could keep it around and see if I ever came across a matching earring. Now, I, while I was trying to figure out that earring, um, I put this great stuff down there. Um, I don't know if I put it down in such a way that you could catch the little hang tag. There's the Brighton hang tag. This is my first um, Brighton piece that I found in a... a a jewelry purchase um, and it's a cute little uh, black uh, flower bracelet I think it's from the flower garden series I think when I looked it up so it, it's little rhinestones in the center of all the flowers and then on the reverse side they're just as pretty um, it doesn't have the black so you could if you didn't want to wear the black side out you could wear just the silver tone side um, so this is a lovely little Brighton bracelet, perfect condition, wearable. So uh, certainly there's the value of the jar right there in that one bracelet. Um, this next bracelet uh, is silver with um, pink uh, mother of pearl. So I guess uh, pink dyed shell inserts. And right here you can see that it's says that it's 925 and I don't doubt from the color of the metal that, that it is silver. Um, so again, uh, a wonderful find in my uh, low cost jewelry jar and wonderful find for my first jewelry jar. Um, very wearable, um, fold over clasp and uh, Mark Sterling. Uh, there was a chain in the jar that has a knot in it. I think I took that knot out. I thought I took that knot out once. Maybe it's just the nature of the chain. It's just a lobster claw chain, and it doesn't close completely. So it's one of those things that I think if you had anything heavy on it, it might pull right out. But I'll put it aside in my uh, kids' jewelry stuff. So if we need to pend it for a... Uh, 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 sorry, we need a chain for a, a kid's pendant. This is a gorgeous pair of earrings. It's got the, the Omega back. Um, but look at those beautiful rhinestones. The uh, browns and yellows. Um, and then the lovely teeny tiny rhinestones around the edge. Just gorgeous. And there is a pair. And I say that with a little bit of... Uh, you know, unsureness simply because the, we have all the pieces, but the Omega back has come off of where it was probably just brazed or um, however it was attached to the back. It, I need to get some uh, uh, cold weld um, or liquid weld and put the earring back together. But I think those are beautiful, beautiful earrings. I don't know if you can, if it's better to put them any closer or not. It's hard to tell um, with this setup whether I'm close enough or too far away. I hope you'll tell me 
I'm still learning. And sometimes I get so excited talking about the jewelry that I forget to make sure that I'm making a good video. So those, um, uh, quite a few pieces to make this jar worthwhile. Um, my uh, Salvation Army thrift store after this time, about a couple months later, started selling most of their jewelry at $2.99 each. Um, three pieces for six dollars. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have uh, just seven pieces at two dollars. I've got my value out of this jar. As I said, it was less than fourteen ninety nine once I had my discount. Um, and plus all the beads um, that I uh, obtained as part of the jar. And there's still more to come here.